Welcome back to the Catch the Sky podcast. This is your host, Sweet Tea. With me, as always, is Safe. Hey, what's up, T? Not much. How's that dirty chai latte? Is that or, what is that thing you got there? Got my latte. Is that what it is? That's what I do with from Black Sheep. There. It's my second time there this week. <laughs> Thanks for the muffin, too, man. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm enjoying this smoothie. I didn't get that last time. So, shout out to the Black Sheep here in Glendale, Arizona. Black Sheep will change your life as far as you know, getting that energy in the morning. In case you got to make that long drive back. But I'm glad you're here with me in the living room. Glad Frank's with me. We got Darnell. Got some energy. I wanna. I wanna talk sports. I wanna. Yeah, we're watching. We're watching the Suns game here. Yes, the Suns don't even get me started, but man, you know what? I'm just a passionate fan. I'm just, I'm just a homer. I'm just. Aren't we all? Uh, we beat ourselves up and we beat up our teams. <laughs> yeah, right. But you know what? I still think there's like powers that be that that are controlling and and determining, and a lot of that can be financially and politically. Politically, navigating the stadium building process. Oh, yeah, and, and it's a totally yeah. different world now with everything that's going on regarding the virus and this whole race situation. we got a lot going on right now, and I don't think people are talking about it. So I think we should talk in sports. I don't think it should be traditional sports chatter. I'm feeling conspiratorial today, so I want to talk about that, and the owners, how we're going to get through this racial health pandemic and the sacrifices of our college athletes right now. We have some athletes with us today. We got Darnell Welch. We got T, used to play hockey or something, and then me, obviously, a golfer. So, fantastic to be here. Let's do this. I don't know if Frank's ready. <laughs> well, we're about to find out. Frank, this is happening. <laughs> I, I don't know, Safe. I really like the Suns, man. Like, they got a squad. I just don't think the front office knows what they're doing at all. Robert Sarver, to me, as a Suns fan, is the clown, is a schmuck. No, I do. I, I, a lot of who, people don't ever Who else do me. I blame? Like, if I don't blame the owner, either I love the owner that hasn't been productive or I hate the owner. You would have to hate the owner. You would have to. Because, like I said, that's, my, that's one of my things when it came to the Bucks and the Packers for a while. Like, when after we won our Super Bowl, when we finally, um, I think it was Aaron Rodgers, kind of like third or fourth year, one of the issues that we've had was management because obviously Green Bay, they're a shared team. So like there's a couple shareholders that share the team, but Ted Thompson was our general manager. Okay. The problem that we've had and the reason why we weren't getting the production that we needed out of our defense is because we drafted literally everybody. We never looked at the trade, we never looked at free agency. And it got to the point where Ted Thompson, like clearly this isn't working. So I'm going to step down. Once he steps down and we give uh, Brian Gutekunst, our defense went from like 30 seconds to like in the top 20, and then from the top 20 just this past season, we were in the top 10. Like it makes a difference when you're not just drafting every single guy. Like that's part of the reason why we let Blake Martinez go. Like Blake Martinez was cool, but like he wasn't. He he's not the he's not that it factor as a linebacker. Like if you watch some of his game film, well, how many owners did you have to go through to get to that winning point? You, you, have, you have to go through a couple of seasons. And sometimes for certain organizations, it literally may be longer than others. Like It took us losing that many NFC Championship games and our first – and when we missed the playoffs, when, when we missed the playoffs, that's when everyone was like, he has to go. Like Ted Thompson when he was our general manager because Ted said, <laughs> <laughs> The standards. Just the standards of real organizations is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't make the playoffs. He's fucking out of here. The Browns are just praying to fucking make the playoffs. What? <laughs> now that that's that's exactly what happened. I, I remember it clear as day. As soon as we missed the playoffs, it was that off season. Um, they did a press conference, a, a big ass press conference. They was like, "Ooh, what the Packers are gonna do next?" And then Ted Thompson just literally was like, "I'm stepping down from general manager." But you guys in, in Green Bay, they have some type of socialist, communist system of organization there, where the fans pay like a dollar and yeah, no, the fans <laughs> own the team. But as far in as what like, capacity though? Like, is that 
I mean, I, I really do appreciate the Packers because they're the one who helped open up the NFL books. And, and by doing so, the rest of us get access to what the hell is going on in that league. Because for all we know, this is just rich men buying stuff, making it really bad, and people screaming, fire this guy. And then he sells the team at a profit. And then that guy comes in and, and you know, this could be some type of Ponzi scheme. Because why are we investing in sports? I guess is we're investing in stadiums. We're investing in brands. We're promoting them. And, and all we're doing is glorifying individuals for no reason other than their physical talents. Well, I think... Then you got fantasy sports, and that's just... Well, you got to look, <laughs> well, look back at the days of like when we used to do gladiator sports like way, way back. And like even that was the same, that was the same process. It was the same thing. People in those regions and during, you know... Greece and Rome and those things of that nature where you got villages full of people which have to like give certain amounts of coins and stuff. They rebuild this whole gladiator stadium that has like this big ass gate and a lion just hops out now. You got this dude having to fight a lion and then you got to fight 700 people. It's, just, it's the same concept. It's always been the same concept. It's just entertainment. It's, it's, entertainment. it's intriguing. It's and enter intriguing. entertainment is so important. The arts, Netflix, whatever, right? Yeah. Everybody has their fix. The, the girls right now listening to this that Sorry, the women. Sorry, wait. I want to make sure that we don't get canceled. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can say women. For using the wrong term. But I said girls first. So the ladies out yes, there. Yes, yes, ladies. <laughs> oh, my God. And here, here the genderizing of sports, right? And yeah. So whether people want to talk about ballet or Kim Kardashian or the latest Bravo reality TV show. And there's culture behind this, and so there's there's and so there's value. I just I'm more concerned about public investment, public good, is suffering as a result of these investments in this entertainment. That's what I and so Robert Sarver to me as a Suns fan is the, at the core of why I despise the Suns because they well that's where you and have yeah, to the Waltons own a couple of sports teams. It's it's well that's where you have to identify the you history hate Walmart? of the owners and where they come from. A lot of certain owners, they come from a history of loving the sport before they even love the business. And so that's why you see a lot of your more prominent, like Robert Kraft. He's a businessman, but he loves football. Like he, he like loves it. hand jobs too. Oh, goodness <laughs> gracious. <laughs> No. He does love a hand jobs. Who doesn't love a hand job, though? Just no, I don't know who doesn't love a hand job. <laughs> no, I don't think anybody has an issue with loving hand jobs. But Last time you guys got a hand job, when when was I'm gonna think here myself too? God, a full hand. This job. morning. <laughs> you got a hand job this morning. <laughs> this morning. Do you want to tell about that? <laughs> That's all you gotta know. <laughs> this morning, Jesus. Oh. Um. <laughs> I'm not particularly sure about that. I can't remember. <laughs> I didn't get that far. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but I know it's on the table. Ah, oh, you lucky son of a bee. <laughs> 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 doctor, <laughs> too, bro. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, so Type of doctor. She's surgical with that. Nice ass. <laughs> Fantastic ass. Here's to you, T. Congratulations on your. So, we have a special guest in the building. Mm -hmm. Darnell Welch, fellow classmate, friend, spiritualist. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that! <laughs> spiritualist. That's funny. Was our first argument, discussion, debate relative to Antonio Brown's use of social media yep, that was in the fun. locker room? That was our first. And uh, right now, I, feel, I believe I'm vindicated. No, I no. To the, now that I look back on it, oh yeah, I I probably would have went with your stance. But it, my thing there. is, my, <laughs> but but see, my thing and where I was coming from from that space as a college athlete, like the game's done, we're over with. We're just trying to kick back and have fun, and especially in the space that he's in as a professional athlete, I don't feel like it was anything wrong. However, I do. Like I said, I, I now seeing his actions and how they like transpired, even the, to today and now, like I do understand. Like, I he just was a full mess at that moment, and it just and obviously, you know, when you don't control that for a while, and you know, it can get 
Yeah, as long as he can catch, it doesn't matter. And Oh, no, no, no. It matters. It, it matters. Because if you can catch, but you still cause headaches and the problem, then people will let go of that catching, as you can see. With Dennis the Rodman, I think, is a great example. Don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare. Don't you dare drag Dennis into this like that. <laughs> Dennis is an exception to the rule. I'm going to be honest, I really do think Dennis Rodman, out of all the athletes who he, have... He's a total anomaly and an outlier Dennis Rodman, to what you're describing. Like the He last, got privileges that nobody will ever like see. Like, the again. last dance really showed how special Dennis um, Rodman is. Like, the fact that he can come in drunk and still be the first down and back and, like... Was that's why Rodman's like that. boss. That's, that's, no one else was able to do that. I was lifting weights earlier. I don't know if you guys saw. <laughs> you weren't doing what Robin was doing. Don't put yourself in the same conversation as Dennis Robin, okay? I was lifting weights for the record. <laughs> Gotta get my swell on. <laughs> but no, Robin's an exception to the rule. Is There's a lot of people that... Give me some other examples of players who have been removed despite their talents where it wasn't... There's so many prime examples of... But that I have Browns examples. I mean, there's plenty of a lot of pain there. <laughs> there's a lot of pain. How are the Browns going to do this season? Not well. Okay. This is the sports episode, by the way. So we we have a Cardinals fan, we have a Packers fan, we have a Browns fan, and we're all homers. Would that be where we? I'm a homer. They can do no wrong. The Cardinals can do wrong, no wrong. Well, I mean, I think out of everybody... Here, I just told you the Browns are going to suck. <laughs> yeah, but we need more in-depth, though. Like, you just can't say they suck. Like, I know, like, for example, like, if we were to talk about the Packers, right, I know in my heart of hearts, as much as I would love the Packers to go to the Super Bowl, I just know that us not having an, another dynamic receiver just is not going to be enough. It's not. Yeah, Geronimo Allison. He's with the Detroit Lions. Oh, if well. I could tell you... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, know you I know you did not just put him as an example. When you but, say that, but, but, so since, much... but since they're going to lose in such unique fashions that have never been seen before in the sport, <laughs> I cannot <laughs> describe to you how they're going to suck. They will find a way to suck. Uh, they, will, they will play themselves out of every game like they do. Nah, how, I, how, I, how did they take the Saints into overtime? I, I, last year, or was that two years ago? How did take the years, how, years ago? Yeah, how did they take the Saints in overtime? They, Drew Brees' fault, probably. No, terrible quarterback. They had Terod Taylor. <laughs> they had Terod Taylor fucking <laughs> leading the charge that game, and they take the Saints in overtime. What? They have no business taking the Saints in overtime. They play to their competition all the time, and then they just they they just fuck it up in the most colossal way at the end of the game. I can't wait for Teddy Bridgewater I, to I, replace Drew Brees. Drew Brees is a stain on the sport. You do realize Teddy Bridgewater with the Carolina Panthers. Yeah, Teddy Bridgewater. Yeah, dude. For the record, I resign. Why? Where have you been for these NFL offseason transitions? (laughs) (laughs) Dog, Teddy Bridgewater. Because they kept Tyson Hill. They let Teddy Bridgewater walk. And so now he's the quarterback for the... BYU. uh, BYU. Shout out to BYU for producing (laughs) the greatest... That brings us back to Mitt Romney. Oh, that, and that, George that, Romney, George Romney, redlining. Go ahead and Google all that, America. You're welcome. He's not <laughs> wrong. He is not wrong. But I, I'd have to disagree with the the Browns take just because I think with Kevin Stefanski and his history being under Mike Zimmer, I I just think they're going to change their whole offense. They're going to be the games, even with the games that you guys lost with Nick Chubb running over a hundred yards. You guys are still successful. It's just once you start forcing the ball to throw, once you put yourself in a position where you have to throw the ball, then it's like you're not going to win. And I feel like Kevin Stefanski is going to know we're going to keep feeding Nick Chubb every single day. We're just gonna- I'd like to think that. But at one point, the Browns had Mike Holmgren <laughs> and Norv Turner, who are supposed to be at that point in time. And Bill Belichick. Renowned fucking... Yes, but then you have to look at the front office that they was dealing with. Because Mike Holmgren was also with the Packers. Back to Robert Sarver. And we still... <laughs> <laughs> but, we st- but we still got incompetent Jimmy Haslam. And he's still fucking... He's just an asshole. <laughs> Honestly, I liked him in Hard Knocks, so I don't, I don't know. Hard Knocks has gone to Hollywood. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, don't, I think I think Hard Knocks 
They saw how many fans were in the stands in San Diego or LA for the Chargers, and they were like, Jesus Christ. We need to remind everybody that this is still an NFL team. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That is very true. I think that's part of why I even offered them that. (laughs) You lost Phillip Rivers. We'll toss you a bone. He's a a Colt now, right? At least I got that one correct. Yeah. Okay, good. (laughs) I did pay some attention. But again, I'm using this opportunity to speak into this Chinese-made microphone that I am retiring from fantasy football forever. I'm done. He has over. decided to trade his knees <laughs> for is going to get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I provided room and board for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. It's good to have you back, T. I know. How did I end up back here? I wasn't supposed to be here. <laughs> now we're talking sports. Great. That's funny. That's funny. Couldn't be happier. So, yes, I do think the Cardinals and Kyler Murray... I think it's just, it's, it's, with the NFL, the beauty of the NFL is that it's competitive. With the NBA, another thing that I loathe is that it's almost predetermined that the one, two seed are going to go all the way in battle. It's very predictable. Toronto, Golden State, Golden State, Cleveland, all of that was very predictable. Hockey is unpredictable. And I think the NFL has a spirit because of the way the revenue sharing operates and functions, which is a form of socialism, by the way, that... It remain, keeps really competitive versus allowing bigger market teams to buy and sell players as they see fit. Whereas small market teams like Green Bay, I would I would put Cleveland in that category. There's still some competitive <laughs> <laughs> signature trademark. <laughs> you got to get that captioned or you know, trademarked. You got to get a trademark. <laughs> You should do that trademark and then just add production at the end of it. <laughs> production. Bam. <laughs> same sound, same pitch, same tone. Perfect every time. So the with the NFL, anything can happen. And I believe that is what makes it such an enjoyable sport. European soccer, you, you know that Barcelona, Manchester City, Juventus... <laughs> You know they're going to be on top. Whatever Bayern, wrong, Bayern Munich is another great example. Would I be wrong to throw United in there? Because I thought United at one point was really dumb. The other team, one day. They were one time. They've fallen off this year. They've made a slight climb. Because I know, I thought their management really like kind of threw them a wrench as far as like comes back to management. <laughs> I, I'm top man. People really forget about the fact that management plays probably the biggest role in the success of an organization. They highlighted that a lot in The Last Dance. Did you watch The Last Dance? That guy was an asshole. I watched... <laughs> I honestly watched the one, only two, the two episodes that they did. But when I heard buzz on like what happened and what uh, Musa manager, Jerry... Jerry Cross. Jerry Cross and what he was trying to do, I was like... I really didn't have to watch the rest at that point because like, I knew... Don't forget Jerry Reinsdorf. He was the owner, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I knew at... White Sox, too. Well, that's also my wife's thoughts on when they're one and only. Was he involved with the Marlins at one point, too? I'm not too particularly sure. I just know he was involved with the whole White Sox World Series win, and after that, they kind of plunged The Marlins really do fit that whole <laughs> <laughs> Florida stereotype of just being a used condom of an organization that nobody cares about. Everybody's just stuck it in there for a little bit once in a while as a side piece, and then they just move along. That is, <laughs> that is why they never really meet their full potential. That's very true. That's very true. <laughs> um, yeah, I know the Marlins. I mean, nope, that's the, that's the Seattle Mariners, I was going to say. Don't talk about Seattle. <laughs> no. no I dare you. Talk about <laughs> no, 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 no. I looked it up on Google. I couldn't find anything. All, but Fake I, news. There's, there's a Reinsdorf Krauss connection to the Marlins. I am getting a Google Mini. I'm going to open up that world and hopefully I won't fuck anything up. I think I'm worried about it not recognizing my voice when I have music on. Back to sports. <laughs> <laughs> so we've had a name change that George Floyd has provided us one important thing. I mean, all right. Lando Lakes, Aunt, Aunt Jemima, Jemima, Uncle Ben. Other forms of epithets towards minorities have been removed on smaller scales, I'm sure. But we removed the name of the Washington Redskins. 
which as a college radical, I advocated against that in the 2006, 2005 season, the Washington football team visited Arizona and I had a, a sign that I carried around with a simple definition of the term Redskins, a racial slur used to define Native Indians. George Floyd was able to, that it's his legacy at this point, as, as it relates to sports, the legacy of George Floyd. Your take, please. Are you talking about in reference of really changing the landscape of how we look at a race in sports? As far as team names, I think, goes primarily. Or just impact. I mean, yeah, it could it could extend to... I mean, you're seeing a lot of, like, if, for example, all the NBA stuff, they're wearing the Black Lives Matter stuff. And respect us. I just saw that on the TV. <laughs> yes. Phoenix Suns. Phoenix Suns wearing respect us. Yeah, so there's there's a lot of... <laughs> you and this Phoenix Suns, hey, I will get to the bottom of this. Zero respect for Robert Sarver. <laughs> Robert Sarver needs to sell the Phoenix Suns immediately. No, he, look, man, he just... What he needs to do is step down. But in reference to your question, I think... <laughs> Hashtag he, Robert Sarver. <laughs> uh, uh, I definitely say in reference to your question, the landscape of how we look at race in sports now mm-hmm. all, was always honest on the owners. It was always on them and their impact. Because if you look at some of these sports organizations and, and the amount of money that they gain as far as like revenue and, and the fact that they can be able to affect change at a drop of a dime really plays an important role in like getting people to be on the same page. Like Mark Cuban, for example, would be a really prime example of like somebody who uses his money to really like spark change. Yeah, he's definitely at the forefront in a lot of those issues. Like when this whole COVID thing happened, you know, he was going to, he was one of the first ones that was outspoken about continuing to pay his employees and things like that. He might run for president someday. I wouldn't be surprised. Would you feel comfortable in him running president? How would you feel? Because people feel... Because I, I, there was a post that I saw on Twitter and he talked about how what Trump's saying doesn't relate to all Americans and all society. What does that mean to be politically savvy, right? Yeah, exactly. Trump is... Well, no, I was going to say, like, because the, the dude's uh, profile pic was just... Trump 2020 with a bald eagle. I was like, that ain't about as American as you can get. <laughs> this goes back to uh, America. Fuck yeah. <laughs> it goes back to Daniel Ellsberg and the Pentagon Papers. <laughs> Shout out to Daniel Ellsberg out there. Exposing the truth. We've been fighting the system for a long time, and, and there's just been a larger system of oppression. And ultimately, your disgust with that system is based on your moral character and how much you financially benefit from this system. That's all it comes down to, and that is why I had such a division. Let it rip. I had such a division with my parents in regard to all of this, is they're diehard Catholics but at the same time want to support somebody like Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. There's a direct moral conflict in Mm -hmm. that. There is, you cannot, you can't do both. Like, I'm sorry, it's just not a thing. And as much as I want to give this guy, like you were talking about, you know, him sometimes making good points and having, you know, he's not wrong about everything. And I understand that, but he's so fucked and so wrong on the things that he is wrong about that you you, he's not morally fit to be in the position that he's in. Just because you're right about some shit, I mean, I'm sure that Hitler was right about some shit. He doesn't read his intelligence briefing. You can be a horrible person and still be right about stuff. That doesn't mean you're fit to be you always in charge. You're a horrible person. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're, yeah, exactly. You're always going to be a horrible person. No matter and, how many right shit you say, if you're a horrible person, you're a horrible and person. And you shouldn't be in the position to be leading our country. There's a number of positions that you shouldn't be in, but that's probably the number one position that you should not be in. (laughs) Radical idea for sports stadiums. Real quick, I have to get this out. Six foot pods, essentially. So you, the cost to go to a game becomes more expensive, but everyone gets their own luxury box. And you don't have to interact with the general public to a degree as far as like COVID's concerned. But at the same time, I don't want to deal with a lot of people. Like, honestly, I'm just done hanging out with people. (laughs) Like, they're building planes and stadiums 
not for the purposes of comfort or safety. They're just building them to pack as much revenue in as possible. And so why are we subjecting ourselves to this? Everyone has a goddamn TV. Excuse my language, and I apologize to the Catholic community who were offended by the goddamn comment. <laughs> but six-foot pods, everybody gets one, and you watch your game in peace, and you move on. You don't have to interact as socially with the general public. Just putting that out there. Boom. <laughs> How do you feel about that? I don't want to normalize this any further than it has been. I don't want to normalize the situation that we're in any more than it has been. What is the situation? This whole COVID situation. The ideal scenario is that we're going to rise above it and not just start building all of our fucking lives around it. 60,000 people. That's not, it's not doable anymore, is it? We're not doing it this year, right? Well, what they should do is just... We'll go the movie route, like we were talking about in the car. Like in movies? Because how many people are going to go to an NFL game this year? Are you guys going to go? If there's a home opener, if there's a fucking home opener, I am there. <laughs> I, I know that. Oh, if there's a home opener, I'm there. Other You'll be than in that, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and if there's steel, yeah, and if there's Steelers game, yeah, I'll be at the Steelers games. I'll be at the home opener. Jesus. If I had health insurance, I would, but I ain't trying to risk my life for that. I'm cool. Nah, I feel like yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good time. If you have health insurance or don't have health, you still have access to doctors, do you not? Yeah, but you yeah, can but sign your life one, away. Th- it's one thing to have health insurance, so then depending on what type of premium you have, you don't have to pay as much. Versus, hey, we'll get you checked, and then next you know you get like a ten thousand dollar like fee, and like you have to pay that straight out of pocket. And it's like I don't have ten thousand dollars just for you to check my toenail. So when I lost my health insurance, like, at, you know, the 26-year-old cutoff, that is right when I decided to break my foot and then my hand. <laughs> <laughs> High pain tolerance, though, for the people at home. <laughs> Who? You. In what fashion? What You're I- a physical, we got a former hockey player, former football player. Former soccer golfer. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the golf's the new game, right? Uh, yoga specialist. <laughs> what pain tolerance? What did I do that was painful? You're pretty you? tough, T. Well, yeah, but I didn't think I'd put myself through any, any pain this weekend or week. Have you broken your hand and foot lately? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So, neither of you have health care? No. Nope. Holy shit. Do you need health care, though? Can't you negotiate rates as you go? Is that Have you ever negotiated rates nope. with sometimes providers? It, sometimes, depending on who you go to, it depends on, like, they, they look at how much you make in order to even get the coverage. Because sometimes, if you don't make a certain amount, you can't get a certain coverage. So, it's like, obviously, with my situation, you know that. They don't know that. I don't <laughs> think they need to know. <laughs> it hasn't been easy. Let's just put it that. It's been and a rough it's, patch. It's expensive as fuck, dude. Like, when you're not getting it through your employer, it's ridiculously expensive. Like, So we don't have an option just to buy outright. Have you thought about buying some form of coverage? Is that I, I did it. That's what I'm saying. Like, no, I, like, I, like when you, I've done you it. You want to buy and you want to. They base everything. Like certain health insurance companies, they base it based off on how much you make. And if you don't make enough, then it's not going to work. Insurance is such a shitty game, and yet it's prevalent for car insurance, house insurance, all types of hurricane insurance. I don't know which one. Natural disasters. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's one of those, and and that's part of why a lot of people feel like that healthcare should be free for all, but that's a whole other conversation on a different podcast. (laughs) It it does get back to a critique of capitalism and how NBA games or sports, sports stadiums are housed in general and who should have that. Like, I don't sticking so many people in the stadium doesn't seem to be the right thing right now, but okay. Two years from now, because I don't think we're recovering till 2021. What are we doing? I feel like at some point you do have to commit to social distancing. You still have to do it because at any given point, this shit can break out and get worse as we have already seen. I do like Ricky Rubio though. Just an FYI. (laughs) <laughs> I'm not finna be this with you. You can't sit here and tell me you like Ricky Rubio, but you despise the Suns. 
If they win, I shut up. But as of yet, they have they don't win. They lose. They're no, orange. Orange, just like the Browns. They lose. No, no, we're not <laughs> doing that, man. They're orange. Name me one orange color team that's ever been winning, including our president right now. The Orioles. They're all losers. No, Orioles. San Francisco Giants. Huh. They're orange. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. They, they, they got some good, there's some team, good teams that wear orange. Any just, others? Um, How many orange teams are there? The Marlins. We discussed that used <laughs> condom. Yeah, I, they don't win like the World Series. They won that one World Series in like two. When was their most recent one? Uh, they won in 97 and then like 2000. Man, was like like World War One. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, early 2000. They still wore orange and they, yeah. wow, they, I don't know if they wore orange then. No, like, they, they, were, they weren't orange. orange then. They didn't have orange then. They were like okay. still the... That's like a throwback though. Like when they wear that orange, it's like a throwback, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Cavaliers, I, Cavaliers used to be orange. That nasty <laughs> shit. Hey, you know how I know that? Because I'm a fucking Cavaliers fan. <laughs> <laughs> That, no, you're not. <laughs> that orange is nasty, though. Like, it's like the, I like the Phoenix orange. Like, it's just like it's just different. Like orange or purple, that's like unique. Orange and brown just looks like you just mashed up dirt <laughs> together. So we only came up with two teams that were winners and more orange. Buccaneers were shit. Okay. No, but they still won. I yeah, bet not in the orange. They had the yeah. green signal. <laughs> mm-hmm. The year they won the, uh, the yeah. two thousand. Now they were red. They were red and gray. No, they yeah, but some of the games they used to wear the cream sickles. That doesn't count. That does count. <laughs> they're they're a team that wears orange. So Cleveland then the Cavaliers when obviously the LeBron obviously but they never wore those colors when LeBron was on the team. They didn't do a throwback never. night. They had to have done a throwback never. night. No, they didn't do a throwback night. Yeah. It has to be LeBron Cleveland. James. Yeah, that, there's plenty of like photo of LeBron James uh, in orange. There's, there's <laughs> definitely uh, just is that put, what I Google? Just put like a LeBron <laughs> Cavalier throwback. There's definitely been photos of LeBron playing. LeBron, so. throw black. Throw bra- <laughs> <All right. laughs> Throw black. <laughs> These pictures should match. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> LeBron throwback. What? <laughs> what was the secret Google search code? Throw black. <laughs> what I love about this Mavericks-Suns game is it does highlight the battle between DeAndre Ayton and Luka Doncic. Games of one and two, who should have drafted who? If I can go back in time, I want Luka Doncic. I don't want DeAndre Ayton. I I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I, I'm, I think I'm going to have to disagree. Especially, if, and, and it just depends on what you want from your team, though. Like, what is it that you try to uh, complete for your team? So, like, if I'm the Phoenix Suns and I know I've been struggling with a big man, like, I'm going to draft DeAndre Ayton because the rest of my big men on my team just ain't as dominant as him. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Like, and that's and that's my thing. That's part of the reason why they drafted them in the first place. You know they're not winning, right? You know that they're losers. I know that, but in <laughs> order to be winning, you need players that win. And I feel like DeAndre Aiden has. Look at this! Boom! Beautiful shot. Even though he missed it, it was still a good <laughs> shot. It's a good shot for him. He can shoot. He can shoot, and I won't take that away. But it's not to say that I still like Luca. It's just in the situation that I'm in. To be I, fair, it should have went. It should have went. It. Exactly. But my, my That's the difference between Patrick Ewing, Hakeem Olajuwon, and DeAndre Ayton. That's the difference between Patrick Ewing and Hakeem Olajuwon, right? And I want to be Hakeem Olajuwon. I don't want to be Patrick Ewing. I don't know. I'd, I'd rather be Patrick Ewing because that third dimension to be able to shoot is just is dangerous. How could they, well, they could both shoot. Just one won, the other didn't. No, but Hakeem <laughs> was more of like a pain beast. Like He's somebody... Once you get into that little square box and you get into that paint, like, you weren't going to win. Like, Patrick did the same, but, like, he can stretch you out. Like, that's part of the reason why, like, the Knicks back then, they were kind of like a dangerous team. Cause well, that and Spike Lee. Yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> you, not, did you not see that coming? <laughs> I, you, know, it's, you know, it's so nuts. I'm like, a Spike Lee reference at some point when we talk about orange teams. I was like, somebody's going to say the Knicks, and somebody's going to say Spike Lee. And Knicks, Montez. also an orange, right? <laughs> Bunch of losers. But they're... Right? They, oh, my God. They don't I count. Did the, I did the research on the Cavs. LeBron, I saw him don the blue with the orange Cavs oh. once, but okay. it wasn't the mid-90s style. Okay. It wasn't that style. It was... I don't know what they wore 
Right. Prior to the '90s, I didn't exist. I do have a Ron Harper, <laughs> and I'm not that interested card. in shitty basketball. <laughs> <laughs> basketball is probably fourth on my list, and football's first. Yeah. Well, yeah, and, and that's the thing with basketballs. I want to love it, but I until the Suns do better, I can't. Invest. They are, they are. They're, you got to give it a chance. You have. To. We're watching the game, aren't we? Yes, <laughs> and they're doing good. It's the first quarter. So, so sometimes that, that makes a difference. You have a good start. Because I've watched some games where they've had a terrible That's start, right. and it's a, it's a wrap. <laughs> yeah. And and but I've been suffering for so long, and I, I the NBA. Obviously, David Stern is a big conspiracy. Let's add this to the conspiracy theory. David Stern, eighty five. NBA draft gives it to the Knicks. Everybody's seen the YouTube video at this point, and this is a preview of the myriad of conspiracy theories that are really just designed to help rich people get richer at the end of the day. Oh, yeah, yeah, write that down. <laughs> <laughs> so David Stern hated the Phoenix basketball market for whatever reason we don't know. Andrew Thomas was Maricopa County attorney. He's actually prosecuted a case against the NBA for this exact reason. And specifically related to the San Antonio Spurs, Phoenix Suns, semi-conference. We know the Robert Ory. Robert Ory, one of the dirtiest basketball players in the history of the game. Knee check Steve Nash into the board like it's a fucking hockey game. And the bench is clear. For whatever reason, the cameras were only on the Phoenix Suns bench. Didn't show the Spurs in previous games where other altercations were occurring where Tim Duncan left the bench. Never got suspended. Amari Stoudemire, Boris Diaw, gone for the next game. And as a result, the Suns lost, continue to lose, and have just been perennial losers every single year. Perennial losers, Jesus. <laughs> but the referee for game three, the NBA snuffed him out and eventually removed him from the league. But he wrote a book, a tell-all book. Very difficult to find. It's like Christy Canyon's autobiography. Mm. That's how difficult it is to find and pay a reasonable price for it. But this man talked about the pressure he received from the NBA to make calls a certain way for certain franchises, for certain teams, depending on the night. And he's come out and admitted that he was involved in that Sun Spurs series as well. So just further that the NBA was anti-Suns and conspiratorial for whatever reason. I don't know why. Rumor has it the referee just wanted to bang a chick in Dallas. I guess he had a girlfriend there. <laughs> so it was just better for him to be, or sorry, excuse me, San Antonio. He had a chick in San Antonio, and that was that was the reason why he just wanted to spend more time with this woman. Mm. But this is the this is the theory. I of course believe it because I'm a Suns fan at my very core. But under these conditions, I can no longer support this tripe and give it any financial <laughs> incentive other than the illegal streaming that we have currently happening right here. Interesting. <laughs> so. <laughs> Does that mean that you will now <laughs> you will renounce your fandom <laughs> to them and try to fall back to your 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 backup team? Is that what you're going to try and do? And if so, if so, <laughs> let me get way out ahead of you. Let me get way out ahead of you. How do you think that the Cavs are any fucking better? <laughs> They uh, did. You better have a third team. One of the, I believe, the greatest NBA champion. Yeah, LeBron's not there anymore. Okay, but they, they, when they beat the best Warriors team, how fucking good was LeBron? How good were the Cavs? Kyrie Irving. Oh my God. No, no, I, that was probably that was supposed team. to be the best, better than Jordan, best team overall in the and NBA. We're talking about the and Warriors, LeBron right? beat fuck the Warriors. How dare they? They stole the Suns formula. They're a bunch of con job artists at San Francisco Bay. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Let me tell Fuck you, orange. <laughs> yeah. Orange. Let, let me just tell you is that color. LeBron's not there anymore, buddy. He isn't. Where is he now? We're back. He's in LA. We're back to what the Cavs in Cleveland really are. I missed that off-season transfer. What you <laughs> hate most about the Suns exists in the Browns, exists in the Cavs, exists in the Indians. <laughs> you do not want to fucking touch this city, bro. Get the fuck away. <laughs> Get rid of the Indians name. Why hasn't it happened yet? That's um it's on the table. I don't know why it hasn't happened yet cuz again, Cleveland is usually at the forefront of a lot of social change as you've seen in the past. 
Remember when we went to the stadium? They had like the first. When it came to African Americans, they had the first of a lot of different things, like manager. Mm-hmm. There were a couple other things I can't remember. We talked to a very the... nice gentleman. I remember he was the nicest person in that stadium. Everybody else was. Well, you got shit on for fucking talking to a Flyers fan. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> so I'm wearing a Penguins hat, and he's wearing a Flyers hat, and we're at an Indians game. So I just like threw in a little rib about the Flyers, and he like looked at me like. What the fuck? Yeah. (laughs) What the fuck did you just say? And I'm like, do you not even realize the hat that you're like? Sorry, bro. Like, never mind. (laughs) Fuck off. (laughs) That's hilarious. Like this dude just is not accustomed to sports talk. Apparently, like. (laughs) Nah, you know, and I think I've always wanted to look at how traditions for certain sports fans start because I've always felt like that was interesting. Like Cleveland, for example. They are probably the most diehard sports fans in life history for a franchise that has yet to the NFL uh, Super Bowl. Yeah, that's the key word right there is Super Bowl. They won so much before the Super Bowl. They won eight championships before the Super Bowl. That's before the merger. Let's, yeah. Let's be real. Yeah. Let's. Well, so that history is still playing out. So you got a lot of those old heads and they raise dumbasses like me that thinks that the team's going to come back around and actually be good like that. And it's not. Because it's Cleveland. Because it's Cleveland. <laughs> and, and then after um, college football... Don't. No, college football. No, I, who's your team? Are you a Penn no, no, fan? No, no, I, a... I, I'm going to say this right now. <laughs> you're a Penn most, State fan, aren't you? <laughs> you're a Penn State fan? They, they call rape over there. No. College sports, to me, don't even get me started on my fucking college sports rape. Well, fuck we, college sports. We just got sports. you started. <laughs> fuck college sports in general. Just fuck college sports and what it's become. It Wait, is who's your team? Fucking, I don't really have a team at this. Point. So let me put it to you this way: when I went, when, no, when I went to the Pitt Penn State game, the first the first game that, that they played so in much years, sense. I went uh, I went to the Pitt Penn State game because I went to both schools. So what I did is I wore my jeans, I wore a blue shirt, and I cheered "Go Team" the entire fucking time. Penn State scores, yes. Pitt scores, yes. I'm having a great time. I'm winning. Everybody around me is pissed. <laughs> So for me, when it comes to college sports, if I'm forced to watch a game or put myself into a game, I just want an entertaining game. Because really, on the whole, really were pissed. college sports <laughs> fucking rapes the athletes. <laughs> well, at, Jesus, what a poor, rape, use of, poor, poor, poor choice rape. of words. But they take advantage of these athletes to, to make millions and millions and millions of dollars. And this, I don't want to go down too much of a rabbit hole, but my whole thought process on my whole thought process on it is, is they need more amateur leagues and a style set up to what we discussed before: European European soccer soccer and hockey. And hockey, the G League's getting there. Like, what's his name? That the the number one like who who was the dude that was like the number one recruit out of high school this year that didn't go to college and he decided to go straight to the G League. I know you're talking about. I don't know. Yeah, I can't think of his name. Up. But like, we need more players like that, like high profile players, to go to those leagues and and start making money on their craft right now, so that the money starts going through there and not through this, these institutions that are supposed to be institutions of education. And now we're relying so heavily on sports for their funding that they're they they're putting those those dollars to work. But at the same time, it's just like you're taking advantage of these kids in the prime years that are health. Yeah. There's a we can establish a league where they can do that and they can benefit too, because right now the only ones benefiting are the colleges. And I, I appreciate you saying that as somebody who is a former college athlete, because when I tell you having this conversation, you're getting free education. I'm like, fam, I can literally be paralyzed and never go to school again. What more? Do, what do you understand? Like our lives are like legitimately at stake. When we Play these sports like I could have an Alex Smith injury and like I can never walk again. All lives matter. So it gets into the the, the one interesting thing that happened though is I had a conversation <laughs> with somebody before that was so adamant that they wanted a they wanted like the college athletes to get paid and at, at our current juncture. I feel like that could lead us down a path where all the money stays with in the NCAA, which is what the NCAA wants. But for me, 
if that's what they're focused on, then why don't you provide them a more appropriate platform than that and not go through the rigors of education and get them intertwined? So I had uh, somebody that wanted, they want the athletes to get paid and they want them to keep getting their scholarships as well. And I'm like, well, that's great. But now what about the other students? The other students, you know, we still have to pay all out of pocket and they're getting paid. So that's why it's, it's a catalyst though. Yeah. Yeah. But I was morally conflicted because I recognize that they need to be paid, but that's why I want it to be separated. Like it's like the separation of church and state. Let's just completely pull these apart because the money getting intertwined with the education through sports is a perversion of what's supposed to be happening. Right. And there's systems in place in other countries, in our own country, through the NHL, right. that work flawlessly. And then it's not only athletes who are making money for the university. There are so many students who are making money for the university in one capacity or another. It's not directly related. But now it's coming up with a fair market value for a college athlete basketball and football being the two dominant sports that ultimately supply the entire school system as far as revenue is concerned. So the the volleyball program, your gymnastics program, your swimming program, all of that is funded through basketball, men's basketball and men's football. And that is the market. So again, if you're a Florida player, there's obviously if you're a a Wisconsin, you're a Sun Devil, you're going to make top dollar. If you're a Penn State Nittany Lion, you'll probably get raped in the bathroom. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Happens. Oh, God. What was that guy's name? Was this George, too? Was it- Jerry Sandusky. Jerry Sandusky. Not and I felt really <laughs> bad for... There's another Jerry Sandusky. I totally forget what platform I saw him on. Whatever. He's like a sportscaster or something. I'm not sure what exactly he is, but he's involved in sports in some capacity. Sure. And his name is also Jerry Sandusky. So he really probably was yeah. going through a rough time when all that came out. This is the precise reason I never wanted my parents to name me Osama Bin Laden. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Mom and Dad. <laughs> no, nah, we good. No matter what, no matter what name we give, it's our skin color. I can walk out this motherfucker right now and still get shot for no reason. You familiar with Lil Dicky? <laughs> um, I don't know. I feel a bit different as far as like wanting to pay the athletes because as somebody who was a former college athlete, a lot of the lifestyle that we think we get, we don't. Like as far as like food, as far as because most of the people don't understand when we get a scholarship, it's for the academics. Like we or like athletics, and so we're getting paid to go to school for free. But it doesn't involve with like as far as like food and board, places to stay, and things of that nature. Like people don't really take into account of like what that is. And so part of the reason why it's, it's even more of a struggle is when you start adding outside forces. So you know some of these kids come from families that, you know, are broken or, or not even just that. Sometimes it can just be middle-class families that just really are struggling to come together with cause and then just playing football just isn't going to work. Like, I need a little bit more. And I'm not saying they got to pay them a ridiculous amount, but like, if you're going to use my name, it's like, at least come get check. That's right. Like not. And I don't know who to give credit if and when this happens, because again, we talked about George Floyd really being kind of the catalyst at this juncture in history for changing the name of the Redskins, and we were hoping for more change. And if that led to some type of revolution in college sports where athletes were properly given their due, paid a reasonable rate for the services they provide the institution. But this can still exist in the other format that we're talking about. It already does. These OHL kids, there's 16-year-olds getting paid $1,000 a game. OHL? What is that? The Ontario Hockey League. Ontario uh, Canadian Communists. They have a team in Erie. That's what our team is in. <laughs> Are they not communists in Canada? Our team. No, they're, they're socialists, but to Americans, that's what we call communism. Gotcha. When you say socialism, <laughs> people think it's communism. And I do not understand how we think they're the same thing, but they're not. But it's okay. Yeah. No, these kids, I mean, they're getting paid $1,000 a game. Pretty good. Shit. You know, somewhere around there, yeah. Like, that ain't bad. <laughs> more that's, than I make. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's more, or right in the in mid-range, yeah. But they get all, well, you're also getting pussy too, so. Well, those kids also, <laughs> and what's advantageous to those kids. <laughs> what's advantageous to those kids is a lot of them, since they're from foreign places, they have families that host them. 
they give them room and board, and they are compensated by the team as well. Hmm. Very true. To house these kids. That doesn't happen absolutely. with any other sports? I mean, it might, but they the NCAA doesn't want that because well, that's all the money that goes. All, that's money that be going out of there. How is that regulated? But I think that's different with different sports, like you said. Oh yeah, it's totally I think, different. Like, I, not really, like who's hosting a kid to come play football? I think it's different than when you're trying to host a kid who's trying to play hockey. Like, hockey's a more international sport. Soccer's a more international well, sport. Well, the, the 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 difference right now, at least in our current landscape, is. These are still like college students, whereas the kids coming in, like the hockey players, like yeah, they're in high school, whatever. But like it's a stab, like they're they're semi pro, like yeah, they're they're something, yeah, there's something there. Like you know that you're getting a talent, whereas a theoretical situation where you're housing a student, a college athlete, it's totally different because yeah. you don't know what they're going to be. They're, you know, it's good just being a college kid. There's liability there too for the safety of that that person, that individual, that student, that child. And then again, the school doesn't want to get tied up and all that. It's, um, again, our world comes back to homeowners associations and why we can't live congenially around each other. That's why we argue and disagree, and that's where a lot of our issues stem from. We're shitty neighbors, people. Start looking at the man in the mirror, please. Wait, what is your next backyard project? <laughs> next backyard project will be to build a wall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're shitty neighbors, huh? Build the wall. And I'm trying to get my neighbor to pay for it. <laughs> True wow. story. <laughs> wow. The fucking stones on this dude, right? I, but that's because I want to walk around naked in my fucking backyard. My house was built for me to walk around naked in. If you guys weren't here right now, I'd be walking around naked. And I'd probably have some hose over. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> I mean, in the crazy part, you're not wrong. That's, that's <laughs> I mean, what, what is a house for if I can't be naked and bring naked women to it? Or men, whatever it is you're into, by the way, out there, because we're fully okay with that here. I mean, could you... Catch the Sky podcast. Yeah. <laughs> catch I'm, the Sky means all the Sky. Yeah, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> all the Sky. I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out how you're going to be pulling this all in. Anyway, show me. Show me. Show me. I've been here a week and I've been getting pregnant. I've been having... I was working on a wife, T. Okay? Alright. Glad it's to have different. you back. We're glad to have you back. I don't know what to do. I I need a woman who can last more than three days out in the wilderness. You know, like, is really what I need. You need a woman that's going to be able to give you a hand job without having to take a break halfway through. Oh, and a right. fucking job without a break. Yes, you bring up a great point. I still can't recall the last time I got a hand job. This I morning. I think it was from my massage therapist. <laughs> Who, by the way, gave me syphilis, but she was nice enough to give me 20 bucks off the next massage. Had to go back Robert Kraft in your house. It's all about Robert Kraft and ownership. It really just comes down to the Patriots <laughs> and how they're the best team ever. And who's their quarterback? Oh, they got um, Cam Newton. Yeah, they got Cam Newton. What the fuck was that? Why was Cam Newton on the market? Because they got Teddy Bridgewater. <laughs> uh, well, after they got Teddy Bridgewater, I, I, I honestly think what it came down to the reason why he sat in that market for so long was, um, if you go on Odell Beckham Jr.'s uh, YouTube page, they actually have a conversation about that. Who's Odell Beckham Jr.? ODB. What'd you call him? ODB. OBJ. ODB. Yeah, he called him ODB. There's <laughs> only one old dirty bastard. OBJ can go write his own script. Yeah. Um, but no, on, on the um, YouTube, it was him, Victor Cruz, Todd Gurley, and... Uh, Cam Newton, and they, he actually talked. Cam Newton actually talked about his experience when he was unemployed. He explained like his agent was talking about like how many teams were like, I would want him, but like his actions on the field, like what he'd be doing, is just too much. And I'm like, well, and, yet, actually, and Dennis yet, Rodman, okay, go ahead. And yet Philip Rivers <laughs> is able to get fucking signed when he's the fucking nutty, screaming nutty, his head off. <laughs> the nuttiest thing that I found that was just peculiar about the situation was the fact that that, that was the only me. thing that they kept pointing at was like his on the field thing like when he does the dab and like the superman but i was like you never really heard him be a bad teammate so i'm like look at all the footballs he wasted giving them to kids in the freaking stands what an asshole huge asshole dude you know what i'm saying <laughs> we can't have that you know how many we pigs had to die for those fucking footballs 
These are, some, these are some, shout out to the vegan community. These are some high stake <laughs> high stakes antics. And the we just kind of community. Have. <laughs> Fresh bacon. <laughs> but meanwhile, you see Philip Rivers screaming at the ref, screaming at his lineman. Scre- I can't wait to see him. In- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the vegan real. I don't think he understands what he got. Colts. Coming. Colts probably going to win the Super Bowl. I wonder what Philip Rivers is like at home. <laughs> That's interesting, dude. Either Philip Rivers is one of two things. A lot of kids. To he's yeah. So he's either the most calm, reserved like parent in the world, and then he just like when he gets to Sunday, he just lets. Him out. <laughs> or that's just how he is, and I feel bad for his kids. I could, I could, I think it'd be the latter. I think it could just be, you know, when he's at home, he's just himself. And then whatever shit he goes to during that day, he's like, I can't wait till Sunday. And then Sunday, he just, he just it compartmentalizes it. Yeah. Because from what I understand, like, he is a very good father. And he already is lined up to coach, like, his son's high school football team or something when he retires. Mm-hmm. So, like, he doesn't seem, and I've never heard of him being a bad father. It's just, yeah, I think that's what he does. I mean, he's, he's just a good PR person. Well, he's... <laughs> He's got nine kids. He probably just compartmentalizes. He, he's probably so numb to it. There's probably so much chaos going on that he's like, I don't even fucking know what to do with this right now. I'm just going <laughs> to... <laughs> That's funny. I am excited to see him in a Colts uniform. I think the offensive line there, If I don't know of any off-season <laughs> transactions that have ruined that offensive line, but... No, I don't need to. They have the best uh, offensive line. Um, top five. And... So he'll be protected. If Andrew Luck would have just <laughs> held on What? Yeah, I... You know what, man? Because that's what got him killed. This is No. <laughs> he but got that's, so but see, but that goes back to management. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The problem was, after they drafted Andrew Luck, was, okay, we're just going to draft skill players, but then it's like, you're not going to draft your offensive line. It's not going to work. I wish he was coming out of the draft and getting drafted to the, the, the now Colts that they have. Because, like, I mean, Quentin Nelson's, like, the number one PFF-graded guard in, in the league. Like, he gave up zero sacks this past season. He's a good guard. like, And their offensive line is, like, amazing. But, like, it's just, it was just a little bit too late for Andrew. And I, I kind of feel that. Hmm. For one like, I, I thought he was... God, he was ugly, though. Good riddance. Like, I mean... What? We- <laughs> If you're going to be quarterback in the NFL, you better have some looks, okay? Did you see that where they change the NFL quarterbacks to women? They modify them. Jimmy G, unbelievably hot. Kyler Murray, very sexy Asian. We're not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> it's sports. <laughs> it makes me really understand. I have all the photos in my phone. <laughs> it, it really makes me understand why in my a special fr- file. <laughs> why my friend was so upset when I told him how he looks like Andrew Luck all the time. I was like, dude, you look just like Andrew Luck. That makes sense. Oh my god. Makes- Josh Allen. Look at how hot Josh Allen is. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the Jets quarterback? Sam Darnold. Oh, ugly as shit. <laughs> ugly for a redhead. <laughs> Jesus. Did we not see these? No, I'm. No, I've seen them. I'm I've over seen it. it. That's why I I'm <laughs> over it. I'm just thinking about Jimmy G. <laughs> I'm thinking about. I don't know about y'all, but I'm masturbating to this thing. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> There's your Wisconsin Russell Wilson. That's not the he looks like Alanis Morissette. He's from, he's from North Carolina. Let's, let's do that. He just happened to play that Wisconsin his last season. Drew Brees, a bit of shit. <laughs> I'm just thinking about how we... Oh, low-key? Patrick Mahomes is hot. <laughs> I'm all <laughs> <here>. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I mean, I'm just gonna go. Th- I'm just gonna sit here and let him go through all 32. Of this fucking. Fight. I didn't see Baker. I'd be interested to see Baker. I'd be interested to see Baker with fucking Joe Thomas protecting his left side. Back to what we were talking about. Depends on which backside. <laughs> Rumor has it he was in the cheesecake factory. All right. <laughs> yeah, 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 he, was, he was, dude. The cheesecake factory. He's just gotta stay away from that place. Bad news for Baker. True. I mean, it's bad news for his gut, but it's also bad news for his PR, yeah. as you were discussing. Right. It's all about PR. If you have a good person to keep you out of the press, you're going to be okay. I don't know if any PR person could keep you out of a Cheesecake Factory affair. They have so many selections there. Speaking of Cheesecake I don't think they went into the Cheesecake Factory. I don't, think they, I don't think they went into the Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> They're just in the parking lot of said Cheesecake Factory. Well, what if they were doing the deal? I just thought like it was a deal. With a chip? 
<laughs> or maybe he's into Coke. Could be a little cheesecake Coke. Maybe Ooh. she was doing Coke off his dick. Eating cheesecake. Oh, eating che- Look, see, it's, it's there's cheesecake. so many options. Cheesecake <laughs> is involved in this. I, I, no one just goes to the Cheesecake Factory just to know. Nobody goes to Hooters for wings. No sex in the champagne room. Shout out to Chris Rock. I think we've covered sports tonight. I don't know what other topics are left on the docket. Ownership sucks. Our teams are probably not going to win it. Okay. Uh, I can say that for the Browns and the Cardinals. I feel more confident for the Packers. And the Bucks. And the Bucks. The Packers have reason to to be confident. The Vikings. Do they, though? Are the only ones that really? Who, okay, if we're gonna break this down, who in the <laughs> NFC North is gonna beat the Packers? That that that's what I'm saying. We, we already discussed this. Mitchell the, Trubisky. No, the Vikings. All right, all right. we'll see you and guys Lions, next week. The Lions have Geronimo Allison. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week on that next episode. No, it's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Matt Stafford just got put on the COVID list. So, is that is it, is he still Detroit's quarterback? Wait, is that, is that, he's he's on the list. He's on the injury COVID list. I don't know if he got COVID <laughs> list. Cause did, is it just one thing now? Like injured reserve slash COVID? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so I don't know if he got COVID. I think he just got put Anyone's going to have COVID. It's Philip Rivers. We've already established it was Jalen Samuels. <laughs> <laughs> From the Steelers. Fuck him. Jalen Samuels. Fuck the Steelers. Fuck, well. No. Yeah, fuck him. Yeah, fuck him. <laughs> You guys have won enough, and the Packers. You guys have won enough too. Fuck well, that. yeah, but the Steelers. Nah, not nah, that. Not that. Win a couple more. But the Steelers, when see, my problem with the Steelers is more their fans and their rapist quarterback. But when the fans Twice. are headbutting each other out of rage because they lost and they're fighting one another and like physically harming each other, I'm just like, what the fuck is going on here? Mm-hmm. You guys are maniacs, <laughs> fucking lunatics. Like, no wonder I jumped the border. Yeah. I've seen the Cardinals fans do this, too. Yeah, but it's not as extreme as Pittsburgh. I, I, I would go with his first. I've, I've seen a couple of Cardinals games. Y'all are the nice people. Y'all don't do that extra shit. You guys fucking tailgate on grass. Shit. No, you tailgate on you grass. Do. I've, I've been, I've, I think it was uh, three years ago, I went to see the Cardinals play <laughs> against the Redskins. Uh, excuse me. Haven't you been now. to a Bills game? <laughs> Haven't you been to a Cardinals Bills game? Very nice neighborhood in Buffalo. Yeah, and how would did you tailgate? It's people's fucking backyard. Did you tailgate? So you didn't <laughs> see any of the tailgates. I met yet. one of the oldest Bills fans, but he's like he used to play for the Cardinals. So you guys are sitting out here tailgating on he had a ring. He grass. was official. Like he legitimately played. Old as shit. He was small but stocky. This has nothing to do with your bougie ass fans. <laughs> a bougie. It's all about bougie. <laughs> because the Bills are fucking out of control. They're out there in the snow. Mm-hmm. They don't have a dome on that shit yet. They're yeah. jumping off of RVs, it's, it's just hurting high each other. High school stadium. They're out of control. You guys are sitting here on your grass with your fucking carne asada, fucking canopies, <laughs> this, that, and the other. Bills fans are the ones that are fucking giving you the people's elbow they, through your canopy. WWF, WCW. <laughs> Yeah, you're sitting there with your grill, and then all of a sudden a Bills fan comes through the canopy off the RV. <laughs> That's what you get. That's we the do difference. love carne asada. All you hear is off the top ropes. <laughs> Bam! Different. Parking lot tailgating is not where we're aware of how that works. They just gave us the great lawn. It's a small piece of real estate, but outside of that, the rest of the Cardinals tailgate is all parking lot. It's all corporate fucking parking lot. And it's political, and they the Arizona Cardinals fucked the taxpayers in the city of Glendale, Arizona, for more parking. Fuck Michael Bidwell. He is a corrupt, nihilistic, Trump wannabe piece of shit. <laughs> That's, I can't... I'll take a knee. But... <laughs> the Bidwell family are leeches... They've done nothing but suck the lifeblood out of taxpayer communities here in the city of Glendale and the state of Arizona. Look at the 2004 stadium initiative that even birthed the Cardinals in Glendale. In fact, to my Browns fan here, 1947 was the last time the Cardinals won any type of championship. The Browns don't have that. So the the longest losing team, the longest losing team in the NFL is the, the Arizona Cardinals. 
scientific fact. <laughs> when did you guys last attend the championship? Uh, Ken Wizenon. Shout out to Ken Wizenon. Yeah, what year? <laughs> 2009? This century. Got it. Browns were last there in 64. Whose fault is that? Management. Haven't even snipped it since then. Which begs to ask why our fans are so dedicated that they will line up to get into the Muni lot before the sun even rises. I, I just don't understand. I'm part of it. I don't go to the Muni lot. But I show up and am parked in my spot usually by 8 a.m. before the home opener. I'll be excited to experience the Muni lot with you someday. Obviously, when the Cardinals come there next time, I'm going to make every effort. Every rock, and I hopefully we'll be back in stadiums. I don't know. I don't know, man. Tailgating, all of this is just weird. The whole thing's weird, and I don't know which direction it's going to go. But I'm going to be there, and I'm going to be safe, and I'm going to wash my hands, and I'm going to wear a mask. You're always going to be safe. <laughs> you know, just, just be agreeable about it all. Don't be disgusting. But yeah, I got I to gotta tailgate you with you in the Muni. I'm sure it's a blast. That's why we love sports. I mean, that's why we love talking about it. That's why we're passionate. And that's why I, why I hate my owner, and then I wish I love my team. Figure that out, right? Well, I'm glad we had this conversation. If you'd like to interact with us more, you can do so on Twitter by searching at CTS Terry, or on Facebook, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, by searching for the Catch the Sky podcast and liking or subscribing there for more content. We're on social media. Isn't that good? Isn't that... Just come listen. Come follow. Join the conversation. Be part of it. Yeah. Keep trying to catch the sky. We'll catch you next week.